is Mariella. So, I recently took my second solo travel trip and I wanted to make this video to tell you guys all about it. I traveled to Madrid, Spain. A couple of months ago, I took my first solo travel trip and that was to Bali, Indonesia, for which I also made a video telling you guys all about it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. So a quick story on how I ended up taking my second solo travel trip. So my younger brother, who is a die-hard soccer fan, which explains how I ended up going to the 2018 World Cup, which I also made a video for, so if you haven't watched it, go watch it. So yes, my brother, who's a die-hard soccer fan, wanted to go to Madrid to watch his favorite soccer team play Madrid versus Barcelona or whatever. I don't know much about soccer, so I'm gonna spare you the details. So my brother literally told me I'm going to Spain to watch this game for one day. He literally flew in, watched the game, flew out, and I was just like, oh my gosh, you're going to Spain. I kinda wanna go too, why not, right? So I went to Spain with my brother. He was there for only one day, only one night, but I stayed there for five nights on my own. So I wanna tell you guys all about that because I had way too much fun. We arrived on a Wednesday, so that Wednesday night, that's when my brother went on to see the game. Um, while he was seeing the game, I was just walking around the city on my own. Um, for a couple of hours and the next day before my brother left um, we really quick went to a tour um, for the stadium which I forget the name of something about Santiago San Santiago Bernabeu I think that's what the stadium was called. It was really cool and then my brother left. After my brother left, I had four more nights to go. So the very first day that I was in Madrid on my own, I went to the city center, also known as Plaza de Cibeles, and I just pretty much walked around the whole day. I had lunch um, and then at night I just went bar hopping on my own. I actually did not go back home or to the Airbnb till like one in the morning. Mind you, I was by myself. When I was in Bali, I made sure I was back home before the sun went down. So, oh, I forgot to mention that, yeah, I ended up going to like a casino. First night with my brother, and then the night after my brother left, I went by myself, and I was just in the casino, like, I lost like 100 euros. Yikes. So if you're solo traveling to Madrid, I am pretty much just gonna tell you how safe I felt in Madrid. Just walking on my own after dark in the middle of the city, you know, I felt so safe. And I was really amazed at, at the nightlife, like even on Wednesday and Thursday, like there were so many people on the streets at all times that it literally just did not give me any reasons to feel unsafe because, you know, there was always like, there's so many lights, so many people, so much movement, like I, I felt like I was still in New York, like it was pretty amazing. On my third day, which was Friday, I was like, woo, it's Friday, what am I gonna do? Same thing, I went back to the city center. On my third day, I actually ended up switching from the Airbnb to a hotel because when we first got the Airbnb, we got it so we would be as close to the stadium as possible. Friday, I just pretty much walked from the hotel to Plaza de Cibeles and I just walked around um, window shopping. Uh, same thing, ended up at a bar. Yeah, and then when I was in the bars, you know, I was striking conversations with strangers. Everyone was asking me like, oh, what have you seen? And all these strangers were very talkative, very nice. Everyone was, you know, telling me like the places that I should go see, museums that I should go see, bars, clubs, rooftops that I need to see before I left Madrid. So that was really cool. Um, I went bar hopping that night with strangers and I actually did not get back to my hotel till like five in the morning. Guys, that's how safe I felt in Madrid. Like I was just partying with strangers and I felt totally safe. Oh, I should also mention that I am fluent in Spanish. So in Spain, they speak Spanish. So I didn't really have that language barrier, so I guess that helped me out a lot in pretty much figuring out what the things I was doing and also just interacting with the locals. But if you don't know how to speak Spanish, you will also find that there's a lot of people that then themselves are traveling and they speak English. Even the Uber drivers, they all speak English, so that was pretty awesome. Like every time I got into an Uber, they'd be like, oh, you're American? I'm like, yeah. 
and then they just started speaking in English. So that was awesome for me anyways. There was not a language barrier whatsoever. So that just really allowed me to interact with everyone that just came my way. So yes, that Friday night was wild. That hotel that I was staying in in Madrid was pretty expensive. So the, the initial Airbnb that we got, it was, I think it was like two nights for, I wanna say $125, which was a really okay price because the Airbnb was pretty cool and it was very, very close to the stadium and it wasn't that far to the city center. From the stadium area to the city center, it was about like a $10 Uber. The hotel that I was staying in was costing me about $115 a night. So I was like, I could save myself $115 if I leave right now. So I left Madrid to go to this other city, Segovia. I met my cousin. They showed me around. We saw important structures such as um, like the castle where the kings used to live, uh, where Christopher Columbus took the order to like go to the Americas or the Indias or whatever. So we saw like very cool historical places, which, you know, I thought I was gonna be in Madrid the whole time and I was having fun with the city life, but it was also really cool to go to this other city that was not that far away. It was only like an hour drive and a coach bus. Um, and this and this other city, you were able to actually see the historical places and a lot of um, the old Spain culture. So if you're going to Madrid, I also would recommend that you go over to Segovia, at least for a day trip, and just look at all these places. Like they were so amazing. It was the last day that I was supposed to be in Spain. Um, same thing that night. I went out with my cousins. We went to um, we went to a, uh, a club that was like uh, kind of like Dominican culture. So it was a lot of like merengue and bachata, which was really good. So guys, moral of the story is, if you want to tra solo travel to Madrid, do it. I mean, technically, I was I only like solo traveled there for three days because one day I was with my brother and then one day I was with my cousin. But the three days that I was on my own, just walking around the city and interacting with the locals and interacting with other people that were also traveling, were absolutely amazing. Like. I was so amazed of how safe I felt in Madrid and how awesome their city life was. Um, so some things I should mention. So it was a very last minute trip, um, but the reason why I went is because I was actually able to find the flight for pretty cheap. My flight round trip from New York to Madrid was about $320, which is insanely cheap for a flight to Europe. It was an eight hour flight for $320. That was insane. I guess the reason why it was so cheap is because it was just a time that not a lot of people travel a lot. It's the very last week of February. So guys, if you book your ticket you know, in advance, like you could get these tickets, this plane ticket, from wherever the hell you're traveling to, from the United States to Madrid for cheap. Um, so I didn't really get to take public transportation, so I cannot talk much about that. I was I was very close to the city center and all the um, cool points, so I was most for the most part just taking Uber um, everywhere I went. None of the Ubers that I took were ever more than ten dollars, except for the ones that, of course, I took from the air from and to the airport. So yeah guys, if you're looking to solo travel to a city that has an awesome nightlife, I would definitely recommend Madrid. Um, I am going to be uploading more videos on things to know before you travel to the places that I have already touched on. So do watch out for those. Uh, when I posted my solo travel video for Bali, I was getting a lot of questions. So I'm gonna be uploading a video of things to know before you go to Bali. Um, and I'm gonna do it also for Madrid, other places that I've gone to. Uh, do watch out for those. If you haven't seen my video for Bali, again, go watch it. If you have any questions about traveling solo to Madrid, please feel free to drop those on the comments below. I am pretty good at answering other questions that are thrown at me. Um, um, make sure to follow me on Instagram where you can see all of the blogs of the places that I've been to and you can also shoot me a message via DM if you have any questions. Make sure to subscribe to be aware of when those videos drop. Comment, like, subscribe, share. You got it. Bye guys.